Yo, how's it going everybody? My name is Brunatier, and in keeping with my traditional schedule of uploading a video, making and uploading a video whenever I feel like it, I've decided to make and upload another video. So, uh, today's video is, well, it's gonna be, um, gonna be kind of a discussion guide tutorial video-ish, eh. So, if you want, you can go ahead and just minimize the tab that you've got me open on and do something else while you listen. But if you want to watch a video, go for it. Um, today's video, in case you couldn't hear it in the background, is going to be on Dead by Daylight. More specifically, one of the key aspects of Dead by Daylight being the um, iridescent shards. And the reason I want to make a video on this, there's a couple reasons actually, but I, I, gu I guess they're both part of the same reason since one led to the other. But, long story short, basically I'm a new player to the game, as if I, you know, if I hit play as Survivor, I'm rank 17, and then if I hit switch to Killer, I'm rank 19. I have literally two games on Killer, and we'll say less than 20 games on Survivor. But that's beside the point. So, the whole reason why I wanted to make this video is because, um, the Iridescent Shards. Now, just because I am new to the game, I've not been playing it very much, if I tab over to Steam, I have nine hours on this game. So, like, I've not played the game very much. That does not mean that I am unfamiliar with it, however. I have been watching Dead by Daylight content for quite some time now, from various content creators, notably uh, Bricky and True Talent. Those are the two primary content creators that I have been watching Dead by Daylight content from. And I ba basically I picked up the game while it was on sale during the Steam Summer Sale and only just recently started playing it. And of course, in playing a new game, especially one that is a tactical game like Dead by Daylight, yes, I know it's an asymmetrical game, but there are still tactics involved. Um, but in, you know, doing so, there is a tactical game, there is stuff to be researched, there are things to learn about that can make playing the game easier. So, through all the tutorial videos, you know, all the guide videos that I've seen, um, various ones like, um, you know, here's your top five perks for Survivor, and, you know, here's the top ten perks, or here's the perks that you should unlock, um in order, like, here's the most efficient perk that you should unlock, here's the perk that you should unlock first, your first teachable perk, so you can use it on all of your characters, and, you know, it was all pretty unanimous with Survivor that David King's We're Gonna Live Forever be the first perk you work on, which means you're pra you're basically probably should just be playing David from the get-go, just so you can maximize, you know, the amount of blood points that you get. But nothing was ever really said about the iridescent shards. Now, they did say, like, for, you know, some of them said, like, oh, you know, for these perks, for these perks, you can either unlock them by getting a character to a certain level. So for David, for example, if I want to unlock the perk, we are going to live forever for all of my survivors, I need to get him to rank 30. And you can see it says right there, maybe unlocked in the blood web of David King from level 30 plus, or in the Shrine of Secrets. And when you basically, when you get, when you get David to level 30, We're Gonna Live Forever becomes available for all of your survivors. But it also says in the Shrine of Secrets. So, you know, if you go to the store and you look at the Shrine of Secrets, well, what's the currency that it says to, that you purchase these with? Iridescent shards. But I could not find anything that related to what to do with iridescent shards. I mean, it's pretty obvious that you use them to buy perks from this or um, various characters, but basically, I'm gonna be... The, the, the whole reason is because it's like, what is the most efficient and effective method or way to use your iridescent shards? What is, you know, basically, what? how are you supposed to do the whole iridescent shard thing. So that is why I'm making this video, is because I tried looking for one and I couldn't find it. So I'm gonna make it myself. So 
this video is going to be split up into three portions. The first portion is going to be what are iridescent shards and how do you obtain them. The second portion is going to be what do you use iridescent shards on, which I kind of already answered, but still. And then the third portion is going to be a bit tricky, and it's probably going to be the portion that I spend the most time on in this video, and that is what is the most efficient or effective way to use your iridescent shards. So, without further ado, portion number one. What are iridescent shards? How do you obtain them? Iridescent shards is one of the three currencies in Dead by Daylight, with the other two currencies being blood points. Anyone who plays Dead by Daylight knows what blood points are. You use them in your blood web, you unlock things, except, you know, you unlock things to you know, perks, items, offerings, etc. And then there are auric cells. Auric cells, however you pronounce it. Um, these you have to purchase. So here, if we look, you know, auric cell packs you can purchase, and these, these cost real money. Um, but auric cells are what you purchase, and it is basically the premium currency of the game. So TLDR... Auric cells you purchase, iridescent shards, and blood points you earn. So, just keep that in mind. So, iridescent shards, blood points, you earn those. So, blood points you earn just by playing the game. Same with iridescent shards. Ir um, blood points are awarded after you finish a game, depending on your performance, um, whether or not you were a survivor or a killer, de and depending on the actions that you did as either. And then, iridescent shards are... A bit weirder. I mean, it, it explains it right. It explains it right here that you gain experience by just pl you gain experience points, and you just increase your player account level, which is this number right here, up in the top right hand corner, next to your survive. You know, next to your rank, which is either your survivor or your killer rank, depending on what side you're looking at. But it is the number to the left of your rank. So as you can see, I am level eleven. And I have um, 407 experience to go until I hit level 12. I'm almost there. One more game, I'll probably get it. And I'll get more iridescent shards. Now, when you level up, you are given a number of iridescent shards. And I'm not sure what the various... Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure exactly how many... It gives you, I don't know if it's set based on the level that you get. Like, oh, if you get to level 5, you're given 150 shards. If you get to level 6, you're given 160 shards. I, I don't know. I want to say it's randomized because I've been given a different number each time. But if I were to take a guess, I would say it's anywhere between 100 and 200 uh, iridescent shards every time you level up your profile. So, that's portion 1 dealt with. That is, you know, that is what they are. They are a currency, you acquire them by leveling up your profile, which is done by playing, just playing the game. You can do it either as a survivor or a killer. Portion 2, the second question, what are the iridescent shards used for? They're used for two things that I know of. They are used for two things that I know of. There may be another use out there, but I, for my knowledge, I have not found it, and I don't think there is a third one. Or even more than that. Um, but there are two primary reasons as to why, you know, what you can do with your iridescent shards. The first that I'm going to mention is to unlock new characters. So, survivors and killers. Um, there are some characters that you cannot purchase with iridescent shards, specifically the licensed characters. So, for survivors, these are going to be Lori Strode. Uh, Quentin Smith and Detective Tap. Those are the three survivors that you cannot unlock with um, iridescent shards. All of the other characters you can unlock with iridescent shards. Um, for the killers, it is of course the licensed killers, so Michael Myers or The Shape. I did not mean to do that. Back to the store. So Michael Myers or The Shape. Uh, the Leatherface or The Cannibal. Freddy Krueger, or The Nightmare, and Amanda the Pig. So those are the characters that you cannot unlock with Iridescent Shards. You have to purchase them either with Oryx Cells or through your 
platform's respective DLC store for Dead by Daylight, of course. Um, all of the other killers that are unique to the game can be purchased with the game. And I, I have not purchased any characters. So the characters that you are given by default are Dwight, Meg, Claudette, Jake Park, Nia, David King, and, well, Bill. William Bill Overbeck from Left 4 Dead. Those are the characters, those are the survivors that you've given by default. For killers, you have the Trapper, the Wraith, the Hillbilly, the Nurse, and the Huntress. All of the other killers you have to unlock either by purchasing them with the Oryx Cells or the Iridescent Shards for those that are available to be purchased by Iridescent Shards. The second use for Iridescent Shards is in the Shrine of Secrets, as I've shown here. Um, the Shrine of Secrets is, well, it basically just bring, it basically brings up um, teachable character perks for random characters. And just so it is, just so it is apparent, perks for characters that you do not own can show up in the Shrine of Secrets. A perfect example right now, Blood Warden. It is a, the uh, Blood Warden is a Freddy Krueger perk. It is a nightmare perk. It's here in my Shrine of Secrets, but I don't own Freddy. So, yeah. Shrine of Secrets and purchasing new characters. Those are the two those are the two uses for iridescent shards. Now, the third portion of this video, and like I said, probably the portion that is going to be the longest in uh, the in this. What is the most efficient or effective way to use your iridescent shards or what is the most effective what is the most efficient effective way to use my iridescent shards <laughs> there really isn't a good answer for that because it depends on what you want so before i get into any of the you know possibilities of what you can do and what maybe you should do let's take a look at the different costs of iridescent shards so for characters, be they survivor or killer, they both cost the same. So Fang Min, for example, 9,000 iridescent shards. And then if I go over to the doctor on the killer side, 9,000 iridescent shards. The same cost for each character. There is no difference in the cost of a character. And for the Shrine of Secrets, every perk on here costs 2 thousand. Two thousand iridescent shards and there are four of them. There are two survivor perks and two killer perks. I don't know if um, I don't know if the Shrine of Secrets is the same for everyone or if it is just based on you know the teachable perks that you yourself have not unlocked yet. And it's just randomized. It just pulls two from the killer tree and two from the survivor tree and, you know, throws those up for you. But the perks, regardless of what character they are from or the rarity of those perks at whatever level, they are always 2,000 iridescent shards. I don't know if the cost changes when you buy one of them, but I would imagine that the answer to that would be no, that they don't change. It stays at 2,000. So with that out of the way, let's actually, you know, let me actually answer the question that I posed a minute ago. What is the most efficient or effective way to use your iridescent shards? And it depends on what you want to do. So let's say, for example, you want to buy all of the characters. You want to unlock every character in the game and spend the time leveling them up to unlock their teachable perks. Well, then obviously the answer to that would be to use your iridescent shards to just unlock the characters and spend time playing the game to accumulate blood points to level those characters up. But what if you're someone like me who doesn't have an interest in unlocking all of the killers or all of the characters and, you know, leveling all of them up? What if you're someone like me? And that, that's where things get a bit tricky, because everyone is going to have different tastes. Um, this is also where the difference in survivors versus killers, like each unique character, each different character, really comes into play. Because for the most part, there is no difference in survivors other than 
how they look, and what perks you can unlock with them. Once you have all of the survivor perks unlocked and available to for everyone to obtain in their blood webs, the only difference in any of the characters is how they look. Which, you know, for killer, obviously every killer is different. They have a unique ability. You know, the hag has her teleport trap things that she can put down. Um, Freddy has his dream world. The clown has his little bottles that he throws with the gas that slows people down. You know, the killers are at least unique. And obviously they look different, but they're unique in how they play. The survivors are not. They Once you have all of the survivor perks unlocked, there is literally no difference. So, for that reason, my 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 particular answer, my unique answer as to what I should do with my iridescent shards is I want to unlock the perks that I want from the Shrine of Secrets first. So, my particular, you know, there is an exception, but I'll get into that for, I'll get into that in a second. But, like, my, un, my um, build that I want to do for Survivor, for example, is Iron Well, Self Care, Lith, and um, Dance With Me. So, in order that those are... Jake Park, that is a Jake Park clerk, a Claudette perk, a uh, Kate Denson perk, or not, the, sorry, Kate Denson is the last one, but it is a Feng Min perk, and then a Kate Denson perk, because I believe, yeah, Feng Min has the Lith perk. So those are the four perks that I want to run just when I'm playing the game, but obviously if I'm farming blood points, I want David King's, um, that's not what I want. That's what I want. I want David King's We're Gonna Live Forever. And so, basically, three out of five of those survivors I already have. Because they're given to you at the start. So Claudette, Jake, and David King. So, what I should probably do... Iron Will is, his, uh, is Jake's level 30 perk... Self-care is Claudette's level 40 perk. And David King's, you know, we're going to live forever is his level 30 perk. So what I should probably do is take Jake Park and David King, level them up to 30, which, as you can see, I'm kind of doing. I've got, da I've got David to level 9, and I've got, um, I've got Jake to level 25. Um... And manually unlock their perks and save my iridescent shards for um, the two other perks that I want being Lith and, you know, Dance With Me. Which, normally, for those two characters, Lith is the level three, 35 perk for Feng Min. And Dance With Me is the level 30 perk for Kate. So... Those are the perks that I want. So overall, to get these, the, to get the perks for these two characters, Feng Min and Kate Denson, I'm spending four thousand iridescent shards. But here comes the other problem: the Shrine of Secrets isn't guaranteed to have the perks that you're looking for. As you can see, it's got, um, it's got a Dwight perk and it's got a Claudette perk for the survivor perks. But the Claudette perk that it has for me is empathy, which I don't want empathy. I want self-care and then um it's got shadowborn and blood warden for the killer perks so for me personally what i will what i will probably end up doing is if dance with me and lith show up in the shrine of secrets i will buy them and i will not bother getting feng min or kate denson i won't bother unlocking those characters because to be honest if you're looking for a tactical survivor to play, probably the best one is going to be Claudette. Just because she, you know, she's hard to see. It's been said a million times. She's just the she's the hardest person to see. She's the hardest survivor to see just because dark map, she's dark skinned, she has some dark clothing. 
It seems pretty obvious. Um, killers, on the other hand, I would actually be interested in unlocking more of the killers, except for Freddy, because he, he, just Freddy. Um, <clears throat> anyone who plays Dead by Daylight knows that Freddy kind of sucks, so I wouldn't want to play him. But um, even then, so like my my build for a killer would probably be something along the lines of. Hex Ruin, Barbecue and Chili, at least those two perks, and then depending on, you know, the other perks, I'd I might do like Enduring uh, Brutal Strength or Enduring Spirit Fury, you know, something along those lines, which, you know, most of those perks are behind, are on killers that I don't have access to. Uh, I know Enduring is on the Hillbilly, yeah, Enduring is on the Hillbilly. And Brutal Strength is on the Trapper. So, yeah. But Hex Ruin is on the Hag, and Barbecue and Chili is on the Cannibal. And the Cannibal requires real money to pay, you know, to unlock anyways, so I'd probably just end up getting Barbecue and Chili off of the Shrine of Secrets before I actually get Barbecue and Chili on... before I actually buy the Cannibal and level him up. So... To go back to the answer, there really is no answer. It just depends on what you want. So I, I guess the one real answer as to what you should do, what you know, what the most efficient or effective way to spend your iridescent shards is based on what you want to do. If you want to unlock all the characters and take the time to put blood points into them, earn those blood points and put them into them, then by all means do that and then any iridescent shards that you get along the way after you've unlocked everyone which i mean let's be honest here as soon as you have nine thousand iridescent shards you're going to be like level 90 and I, i'm level 11 and i have a little over 1120 but by that point you would probably have those perks anyways and the amount of time it would take for you to you know, unlock those perks through the killer just by playing them or leveling them up by playing another person would um, would be a little different. So time-wise, the most consistent method would be to just unlock characters one by one and, you know, take the time to level them up. But if you get lucky with the Shrine of Secrets, and it, again, it depends on what perks you want, if you get lucky and you find a perk that you want in the Shrine of Secrets, then do that. But if you're going to be using a character that has a perk that you want, like let's say you want to um, let's say you want to play the hag, and you want Hex Ruin, or you know, I mean she has Hex Ruin by default. Oh, shut up. But she has Hex Ruin by default. You don't need to level her up to teach her her own perk. She has it by default. So, yeah, I mean, unlock the hag and then use your blood points to level her up and get Hex Ruin for your other killers. But that's, I mean, that's really all I've got to say on the matter. Just, it, it depends on what you want to spend your iridescent shards on. Me, personally, I, I will go for perks first and characters second, but that's me. If you want to do something else, power to you. It's your game. You can play it how you want. But, uh, yeah, that's going to about do it for me. I um, hope you guys found this video helpful, informational. If you did, a like would be much appreciated. If I missed anything, um, someone who knows more about the game than I do, like I said, I'm knowledgeable, but I'm still new. I don't know everything. So if I missed something, then please put that down in the comment section and be nice about it. Otherwise, I'll just remove your comment. So, oh, and on a side note, before I roll my outro here, because this is after the fact of what I just finished recording, but uh, I am thinking about starting a little mini-series on Dead by Daylight, where I just play, like, one game per rank. So, like, I'm, I'm rank 17 Survivor. So I play a game of Survivor, and if I pip up and get to the next rank, then I'll play 
not in the same video, of course, but I'll play a game of rank 16 Survivor, and then I'll play until I get to rank 15, and then do a video on rank 15. 15 fucking hiccups. But get a, you know, get to rank 15, do a video on rank 15, rank 16, same thing, rank... I just went down, or up, down. Rank 15, 14, 13, etc, etc. Basically, I'll just, I'll play like one game per rank, and this will go for Survivor and Killer. Um, so, 19, 18, 17, 16, so on and so forth for uh, Killer. Uh, and it, it'll it'll kind of depend on what my daily rituals are. I've got three rituals for killers right now, and I don't like playing killer. Granted, I've only ever played two games of killer, both of which were with the Huntress because I had daily rituals, and I stomped pretty hard. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for me. I'm going to let the previous, the the past me, go ahead and roll the outro, so... With that being said, I hope you guys are having yourselves a wonderful day. If you want to see more from me in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. I'll see all of you in the next one. Bye-bye.